Before we start today's video, I'd like to take a moment to give my heartfelt condolences to the families of those we'll be discussing today. See, this is a story I always felt I needed to redo with more detail. So here we are on White Plains Road in the Bronx. Now the area you see behind me and going all the way downward is a very busy strip, especially when it comes to the Christmas season. You'll see people up and down the street all day shopping. But if you were here 28 years ago, around this same time of year, this entire block was filled with nothing but chaos and bloodshed. And it was an event that residents of the Bronx wouldn't soon forget. Now I do have to warn that today's video contains vivid details of the events that took place that day, some of those involving children. So before jumping in, please go in with caution. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. As the story develops, the alleged gunman, uh, Mike Vernon, uh, had been coming to this uh, Little Chester shoe store for the past couple of weeks looking for a pair of sneakers in size 13. At 11.51 a.m. today, they say Vernon snapped. When he snapped, he shot the clerk, a woman and her boy who were trying on sneakers, another teenager, all dead. In New York City today, the second mass murder in two weeks. A gunman, apparently a robber, shot nine people, killing five of them in a shoe store among the dead, a 12-year-old boy and his mother. The gunman then was critically wounded in a shootout with police in the Bronx. The footage you just saw was taken on December 19th of 1995 in the Pelham Parkway section of the Bronx. Just mere minutes before this tragic scene unfolded, the streets of the Bronx were filled with many looking forward to the quickly approaching Christmas holiday. Outside, the signs of the season were everywhere as snow fell over New York City preparing us for a white Christmas. It's a time of the year that a lot of people are looking forward to. Many did last minute shopping and gathered up all their ingredients to spend hours upon hours in the kitchen. Just something that comes routine before the celebrations begin. Nights filled with laughter, food, and most importantly, the loved ones who make it all worth it. But as the sun set on another holiday, as Christmas came and went, residents of the Bronx couldn't help but think back to what took place just a few days prior when five lives were brutally taken, bringing the holiday cheer that blanketed the Bronx to an abrupt end and changing the lives of five families forever. On today's episode of Evil Intentions, this is Last Words, the story of the Little Chester Massacre. bloodbath in the Bronx at a shoe store. Six people and three more wounded. One of the They wounded. say he was, this is their word, displeased with the service and that he then began, as they put it, shooting everybody in the store. Little Chester Shoes was located on White Plains Road in the Pelham Parkway section of the Bronx. On December 18th of 1995, Brothers Rafael Gonzalez, 12 years old, and Ricardo Gonzalez, 14 years old, attended school at MS-135 in the Bronx. Snow fell on the ground and temperatures became frigid as the boys and other New Yorkers prepared themselves for holiday festivities. The music, the friends, the family, and the overall feeling of being thankful for making it in another year in a place like the Big Apple. As they got ready for Christmas break right around the corner, they spent time with some of their friends and expressed how excited they were because they were taking the next day off to go Christmas shopping with their mother, a Puerto Rican woman by the name of Maria Carasquillo. The boys were getting new pairs of sneakers and they couldn't be more thrilled. Maria wanted to make sure that the boys were happy with their gift, so she made sure to bring them along. The two brothers were truly inseparable and never even fought according to friends and family. Their father always reminded them to work hard so they would never struggle in life. So that's what they did, sticking to their schoolwork and listening to the advice of their dad. 
Their father was an auto mechanic, and he was never ashamed of what he did for a living. But what he really wanted was for his children to never have to walk the same path he did, to never have to struggle. Rafael and Ricardo had a very close bond and did virtually everything together. They loved to play sports like football and basketball, and if it wasn't sports, they were both spending hours on their Super Nintendo at home. They both had a great sense of humor. It was said that if anyone tried to crack jokes on Ricky, his response wasn't even aggressive. He would just laugh at them and make more jokes. Ralphie was no different, always putting a smile on people's faces with his laughs, always trying to get people to see the humor in things. Excited about what was to come, Maria and her children would leave their home and they would go to get those early Christmas presents. But what they didn't know was that these moments would be some of their last. On December 19th of 1995, Rafael, Ricardo, and their mother Maria left their home and visited Little Chester Shoes, a popular shoe store in the Pelham Parkway section of the Bronx. Rafael knew that he wanted Nikes for Christmas, but he just wasn't sure which ones. While at the store, the two brothers began to try on different pairs of sneakers to see what suited them the best, when all of a sudden, a commotion broke out. The commotion was the shouting of expletives from a man named Michael Vernon. Vernon, a 22-year-old man with a history of arrests and mental health issues, including schizophrenia, had been visiting the shoe store for about two weeks, looking for a particular pair of sneakers. He was also a low-level drug dealer who wasn't really making any type of money in the streets. It's believed that in actuality, Vernon had been casing Little Chester's shoes for a robbery for weeks, but he came to the store saying he was looking for a pair of brown sneaker boots and he would use that as an excuse. According to reports, Vernon had placed an order for a pair, and when he arrived at Little Chester that day, one of the two store owners, Kyung Bae, let him know that they weren't available in his size. She could be overheard telling Vernon more than once that his size just wasn't an option. Vernon kept asking, and he kept receiving the same answer, and this would begin to enrage him. He was so furious that as he walked away from Miss Bay, he would yell, I want those fucking shoes, as he took out a 9mm semi-automatic handgun. He demanded cash immediately, or he would begin shooting. A store full of bystanders would become paralyzed with fear when they realized that this ordeal had quickly escalated, and the one thing between them and the front exit was an unhinged man wielding a loaded gun. Vernon felt that the people in the store weren't taking him seriously, so he began to make good on his promise from earlier and he started firing. Raphael still had one old shoe and one new shoe on his feet when Vernon fired, hitting him in the head, killing him instantly. He then pointed the gun at Maria Carrasquillo and he fired, striking her in the head as well, taking her life. Ricardo, who was looking at Boots, was also shot and killed. Vernon continued on, pointing his gun at his next victim, Henry Michael Lucerno Inga, Henry was living in the New Rochelle area of New York with his cousin. His cousin had only made it to New York two years prior, before they'd end up at Little Chester's shoes that day. Vernon had no second thoughts, shooting and killing him while the entire store watched. He then began aiming his gun at Kyung Bae, the second store owner's wife. Kyung was described as a sweet woman who was always friendly, and the whole neighborhood knew this. Mr. Bae, her husband, had the same reputation, and the location was well known. Many would praise the small business. Mr. Bay looked through a peephole in the storage room when he heard the screams coming from the front of the store, only to watch his beloved wife be shot in her head right before his eyes. He had only just looked through the peephole trying to figure out what had happened, and this is the first thing he sees. He witnessed the whole thing, and sadly, this was all happening on the worst day imaginable, their second wedding anniversary. Two years before this, they were making the ultimate commitment to one another. Now, their marriage had come to an abrupt and heinous end. Vernon attempted to escape the store, shooting at anyone who got in his way. Others who were wounded in the shooting included a store clerk who was shot in the right eye, left eye, and left side of his neck, and another man who was shot in the chest and side. Any other survivors who were left unnamed were all left in critical condition. Vernon shot his way out of the store with no regard for anyone in front of him and fled north trying to make an escape. A few officers having lunch two stores down heard the shots and followed the screams of onlookers who began to point out Vernon and where he was running. 
One of the officers shot Vernon, hitting him in his groin and hand, but he was left in stable condition and brought into custody. John Miller joins us from the scene and tell him, John, I understand it's one of the most horrific things you've ever seen. Uh, absolutely, Carol. Uh, and as you said, five dead, four wounded, including the gunman. As the story develops, the alleged gunman, uh, Mike Vernon, uh, had been coming to this uh, Little Chester shoe store for the past couple of weeks looking for a pair of sneakers in size 13. When he came back today, possibly the third time, and they didn't have the shoes in his size, he just snapped. In the end, it was multiple murder over a pair of shoes. Police say Michael Vernon was a man with a very short fuse and a gun. At 11.51 a.m. today, they say Vernon snapped because the sneaker store didn't have the sneakers he wanted in his size. Police say he had been here every Tuesday for weeks looking for those particular shoes. When he snapped, he shot the clerk, a woman and her boy who were trying on sneakers, another teenager, all dead. Kaiwang Bay who this morning was celebrating her two-year wedding anniversary with her husband, the store's owner, Chung Bae, was also killed. She died in surgery at Jacoby Hospital. Her husband, Chung Bae, watched the scene unfold in just a few horrible seconds through a peephole in a back room of the store. A highway patrol officer came upon the scene and confronted the gunman with a hostage in the store's front door. Shots were exchanged. Four off-duty cops joined in the chase the gunman was wounded and fell on the corner, his 9 millimeter still cocked and covered with blood. The guy was scared. The guy was running for his life. I think he was trying to make it to the alley and possibly get lost in the uh, basements. He reportedly said to off-duty police officer Felix Vasquez that they wouldn't sell him the shoes, so he shot them. The apparent motive appears to be robbery, but it is still under investigation. I know he is. At the scene, the mother of one... A store employee who was shot in the head pleaded for any information. She wanted to know if her son was still alive. And the grim task of reconstructing the scene by crime scene experts and removing the dead unfolded before a stunned crowd in a light snow. Earlier we had reported that it was uh, their wedding day. Apparently that was through a language barrier uh, because the store owner is Korean and they had trouble understanding that. Apparently today was their two-year wedding anniversary, just to correct that earlier report, a day that was supposed to be one of celebration that ended in tragedy. Reporting live from the Bronx, John Miller, News Channel 4. Thank you, John. Truly unbelievable. It was the second deadly store attack in just two weeks. Eight people died in a store massacre in Harlem. Good evening, Bill. In the last few moments here, we've had an update from the mayor, Giuliani, and police officials lending some light here beyond what we had previously as to why this happened. They say that this gunman, whom they identify now for the first time as 22-year-old Michael Vernon, went into the store looking to buy a pair of boots. They say he was, this is their word, displeased with the service and that he then began, as they put it, shooting everybody in the store. Police officials say that the victims include a teenager whose Christmas shopping, they say, was interrupted by sudden violence. The bodies came out five hours after a five-second confrontation left them riddled with a robber's bullets. Four victims died inside Little Chester shoes, including a 13-year-old boy. Two more would survive to the hospital and die there. Stunningly, it might have been worse if a lone NYPD highway patrol officer hadn't been driving by and been alerted to the horror. And he was holding the, the walkie-talkie and firing at the same time. The officer came out of his uh, vehicle. He took his uh, shotgun with him. He took cover, we believe, in the street here behind a uh, parked automobile and engaged uh, in a gunfight with a male who exited the store shooting is a clerk at a nearby store. So I screamed to the customer, run to the back of the store, try to get the key. Next thing I know, the shots were going off. The officer returned fire, hitting the suspect in the groin and hand, bleeding badly. The gunman was chased down by transit officers who happened to be having lunch two doors down. We heard some shots go off. At that point, we chased the perpetrator. And you go around the corner... And we see people pointing that he's running in that direction, and uh, we catch up to him, and he collapses. After which, he was rushed to the hospital along with his victims. All that remained later were some clothes stripped off the gunman by paramedics and piled up under yellow plastic. Back in front of the shoe store, blasted car windows and scattered bullet casings also provided evidence of a robbery turned to disaster.
The police said that when the gunman came out of the store, he had a hostage, another person that when he saw the police officer Go. Police came out here and told us that there were not six people dead, but there are five people dead here. And at this time, the massacre appears to be over a pair of boots or sneakers, and they are not quite sure if robbery was quite the motive here. Now, it happened around 11.52 this morning, and uh, shortly about 5 o'clock, they brought some of the victims' bodies out. A female, 28, a boy, 12 years old, and then two other males, 16 and 30. Now, a fifth one died, fifth victim died at the hospital, at Jacoby Hospital, a little while later. And four others, including the suspect, are still at Jacoby Hospital. Now, the suspect apparently walked in, wanted a pair of boots or sneakers, and he was upset with the service, so he pulled out a 9 millimeter and he started shooting. Somebody ran outside and flagged down a cop. The cop pulled out a rifle, and he started uh, telling everybody to get out of the way. And that's when the suspect fired at the officer. The officer fired back several times hitting the suspect in the groin and in the hand. Now, a short while ago, the mayor and Commissioner Bratton were out here, and they talked about the victim's injuries. So all of the victims uh, were shot multiple times. Five of the eight victims were shot at different uh, parts of the head. And the carnage here is uh, a horrible, horrible thing. And uh, I'm sure everyone in the city joins me in offering condolences and prayers to the uh, families that have to bear this uh, terrible grief. The woman who died at the hospital was the shopkeeper's wife, and we understand that it was the shopkeeper and his wife's second anniversary today. It's a very sad story. We're live. I'm Anita Padilla, Fox News. Back to you. When detectives asked Vernon for his reason on carrying out the massacre, he would go on to explain that he had been there plenty of times before to buy sneakers on his way to therapy sessions. He wanted to do a stick-up, and his reason for shooting everyone was he wanted no witnesses. At pre-trial hearings, Vernon would also state that after the massacre, before leaving the store, he doused the store with lighter fluid and attempted to set it ablaze to get rid of any evidence. He couldn't get the match to stay lit when he tried. Vernon's most shocking admission, however, wasn't his reason for the senseless slaughter. He told detectives that he had killed before, and they knew about it. Vernon had confessed to killing two New York City cab drivers near his home in the Edenwald houses back in 1993. He made this confession in July of 1995, and for whatever reason, not enough evidence meant not following up at all. He told authorities that on November 3rd of 1993, he took the life of 52-year-old Stephen Feynman. It was a botched robbery attempt that ended with the innocent man being shot in the head once, killed instantly. Feynman was one of 39 taxi or livery cab drivers slain as they worked in 1993. The number was rapidly growing back then. Now there were sketches released by NYPD of who they thought might be linked to these slayings, but the person didn't look anything like Vernon. Regardless, he would maintain that this was him who did this. Vernon's lawyer would then state that these admissions weren't valid since his client didn't know what he was saying, having been on pain medication and wasn't all there. Just a few weeks prior, a man walked into Freddy's Fashion Mart in the heart of Harlem and decided he would take the lives of seven people before setting the place on fire. In that story, innocent lives suffered a cruel fate at the hands of someone who could not be reasoned with, making for a particularly somber holiday for all of those affected. Ralph, Ricky, and Maria's family would go from once planning a Christmas party with family and friends to now having to decide where they wanted to bury their family members. If Vernon had been in prison for those murders, the ones he committed earlier on in 1993, the Little Chester incident would have never happened and the people who lost their lives would still be here today. As Vernon's trial unfolded, more disturbing details of that day would come to light and one of those pieces of information would break the hearts of anybody who heard about it. Yes, that gives you the last word. Yes, that. Yes, that. Rafael Gonzalez carried a toy tape recorder the day he was murdered. It was a yak back, a popular toy in the 90s. It seems that while all this commotion was going on, Rafael hit the button in a panic. A high-pitched voice can be heard pleading with the gunman, saying, Please, don't hurt me. Authorities believe that these were little Raphael's last words. Suddenly, the holiday party kids at MS-135 had planned for Christmas had now turned to making plans to honor their friends who were taken away from them way too soon.
Michael Vernon was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Rest in peace to all who lost their lives that cold day in 1995. My condolences to all the families and the loved ones. You aren't forgotten. Five people are dead, their bodies strewn throughout this shoe store. Pelham Parkway section, a working class, quiet neighborhood. A neighborhood shattered just days before Christmas. Survivors 